Welcome to Channel 18 News, I'm Jim Rogers. All students and staff in the Silver Springs Independent School District will be released an hour early on Friday of this week. Buses will also run one hour ahead of their regular schedule. Silver Springs Independent School District asks all families to please make adjustments for the early dismissal this Friday. Plant process fabrication will begin operations today in facilities built and owned by Silver Springs Economic Development Corporation in the Pioneer Business Park. PPF is a division of Plant Process Equipment Incorporated, a privately held engineering, construction, and operating company specializing in projects for chemical, petrochemical, petroleum, biofuel, and green energy industries. EDC Director Roger Figley stated that the city is thrilled to have a company of such high quality choosing to relocate in Sulphur Springs and Hopkins County. PPF will begin hiring immediately. They plan to enjoy, employ about 150 when they are in full operation. The Sulphur Springs location will manufacture equipment to produce methanol products for Ohio and renewable fuel products for Oregon. There will be a job fair later this week at the plant. We will announce that as information is given to us. Contact Texas Workforce Commission for more information about applying for a job at plant process fabrication. The Hopkins County Museum and Heritage Park held Indian Summer Days and the Dutch Oven Cooking Contest this past Saturday. The blacksmith shop was open, butter churners and grist mill were also in full swing. Dutch oven cooks were at work and most of them had completed their work by 11 a.m. Whichever pot looks, the food that's cooking looks the best in the pot. The so and it's, an, it's an appearance thing. Yes. That must be a rough job. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a hard decision. We've done, we've done four and we're already confused. All right. <laughs> we'll get it figured out though. Oh yeah. Okay, can I get your name please? Uh, Carrie Harmon. Shirley Moreland. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Donnie, I think I've seen you out here every year. Except for last year. Where were you last year? Well, somebody told me to go to the golf tournament. Oh, so how'd <laughs> you learn your lesson? Yes, <laughs> not to play golf. Well, what are you cooking up today? Some other steak, scalloped potatoes, pecan pie, and rolls. Okay. I think everybody out here has won something in the past. What have you won? We've won best meat, best in pot. Best dessert. And we won it all one time. And your plans for today? Win it all today. <laughs> Can I get your name? Dan Paul. You from here? I'm from Duncanville, Texas. Um, son in law is here, Humby. Gary Almond. So you come here just for this cook off? Yes, we do. Been, this is our fourth year, I guess. Okay, well, I believe everybody out here has won something in the past. What have you won? We won uh, overall second, I think our first year, and last year we got uh, best vegetable. And your plans for today? Something, we're not sure what. Well, hopefully we get something. If not, we're having fun. Thank you. Cooking a lot of food. Thank you. Which one of you is the chief cook? We both are. We're a team. Well, what's your name? I'm Sharon Richmond from Fort she Worth. She entered and I down the middle. We did the opposite last year. Last year she won the free a free entry from the cooking class. So, <laughs> so y'all from here? Fort Worth. Arlington. From where? For Fort Worth. Fort Worth. You came here just for yeah, this cook-off? We came to the cooking class. That's how we met. Was at the Dutch Oven cooking class two years ago. And Dan won a free um, entry fee to this. And she didn't own a Dutch oven. <laughs> so, so that's how we got started. It smells good too. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Thank you. What's your name? Hunter. Where are you from? Um, here, Sulphur Springs. You live in Sulphur Springs. Mm -hmm. Well, how long have you been cooking Dutch oven? This is my first year. You like it? Yeah. You like eating it, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and these your parents? No, uh, this is my not. nephew. Your nephew. Okay. And what is your name? Uh, Chris Wilson. 
And you? And I'm Brittany Wilson. And I believe everybody out here has won something in the past. What have y'all won? Uh, we won best dessert. I've never won anything. This is, uh, but he's won. Uh, he won best dessert five years ago. Best dessert. We did s'mores, crock pot s'mores, or Dutch oven s'mores. And your plans for today? And we're doing chicken pot pie, cheesy garlic bread, and we have a caramel apple dump cake for dessert. Wow. And what's your name? Richard Watkins. Are you from here? I am. I live in Picton and I work at Farm Bureau Insurance. Okay, and I believe everybody out here has won something in the past. Yes. What have you won? Uh, I think we got best in oven last year and best meat. We've never won at all, but we've won categories here and there. So. Well, that's, that's a goal for the day, I guess. Yeah. You certainly got a lot of pots out here. You have to. Batch <laughs> biscuits. I did two meats. I, we generally do two meats because there's a lot of people and the food runs out really fast. Uh huh. And uh, so. That's because this isn't a well known secret like it used to be. No, people it's are not. coming out to eat. You got to be alert. When they start serving, about 20 minutes later, the food's gone. <laughs> which, which one of you is the chief cook? We share it. Well, then I need all of your names. <laughs> Who are you? Paul Elliott, Derek Simmons, my daughter Olivia. What are y'all cooking up today? Thank you. Go for it. Doing uh, red wine braised short ribs and a uh, uh, roasted veggie uh, risotto casserole and uh, garlic knots and an Italian cheesecake with uh, berry compote topping. I believe everybody out here has won something in the past. Have y'all won anything? Yeah, we've won uh, best meat a few years ago, and then we got third overall two years ago. Hey, what's your name? Fred Chapman. Where are you from? Trenton. Trenton? You come all the way here just for this? Yep, six been years. Six years? <laughs> so I'm betting you've won something before. A couple times. You remember what what were it? Uh, what best were it? in pot when I had a, a Philly cheesesteak stuffed bell peppers and I, and one with cornbread with green onions on top of it. And you planning on taking it all this year? I would like to, but I doubt it. <laughs> My competition over there taught me how to do it, and he beat me all to pieces. Uh oh! I guess we'll have to go talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> Could I get your name? Mike. Where are you from? Leonard, Texas. You come here just for this contest? Yes. You've been here before? Uh, how many years is this? Six, seven? No, it's more than that. This is, I've been every year they had it. Except for this one. Except for one. The first one. Well, you know your neighbor over here? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, that was real. Yeah, he's already blaming you for them not winning. <laughs> Maybe? Uh-huh. See, the truth is, I invited his wife to look at this stuff, and she came and looked, and then he got involved. In it, so he blames it all on me. <laughs> so, and that's the real story, eh? That's the real story. <laughs> And who are you? We are the Ray family. The Ray family. And uh, we're cooking some Dutch oven style. Somebody told me you've been doing this for years. We have done this a few times. In fact, right over here, Mom, step to the side, is our grand championship from uh, 2011. All right, let's, let's get that, that one little <laughs> there. Next to our dad who got us into this stuff. <laughs> well, what are you cooking up today? Today? have uh, pork chops smothered in two kinds of crowd and a few other things. Oh man. I'm gonna go get that other easy up out of the back of my truck. Put that other easy up up. I've got one sitting over my back of my truck. So what got you interested in this to begin with? My father. Uh, he, he and his friends were original members of the uh, Texas Lone Star Dutch Oven Association back in the 80s. And uh, he got us into it all the way back then. We've been cooking Dutch oven for near 30 years. 
obviously enjoy it. Yeah, we do enjoy it. <laughs> Very much. We get together at least once a year and do it, but more if we can. Okay, and y'all are from here? Uh, uh, my mom right there is from here, and my brother, I am from here originally. I live in Rockwall, Texas currently. And my sister's in Bedford, my sister Anna. So you started all of this? Uh, well, I was sort of forced into it by Shem, my husband. <laughs> and so we have been every place and cooked in Dutch ovens. So yeah, it's a kind of a family tradition. What you gonna do there? He's, she's gonna stir something. Oh yeah. That's pretty much perfect. Give me your name. Donnie Peters, Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op. Salute! Mr. So <laughs> Brown. <laughs> what are y'all cooking up today? Uh, we got today, we got stuffed pork loin wrapped in bacon fat. This is really good taste. We got some angel biscuits with uh, honey cinnamon butter. We've got a nice corn casserole right here. Huh? Uh oh. Ooh, my. See, you've already attracted a crowd. <laughs> I knew it would. And then we have an apple cobbler, and uh, like everybody says with apple cobbler, said, man, that'd be good with some vanilla ice cream. We're going to have vanilla ice cream to go with it. So it won't get much better than that today. Well, I believe everybody out here has won something in the past. What have I you won? I believe so, yeah. What have, what have y'all won? Well, last year we got second place, so there's one spot for us to be able to get to that would be any better than that. So we're just hoping to have a good time and everybody likes what we may do. Morning. Hi, good morning. how are you? And who are you? Tim Berger and my wife Kathy. Where are y'all from? Middle Grove. Miller Grove, you come all the way to the big city for yes, this competition. Sure did. <laughs> Been coming for several years. What, what are you cooking up today? We got a meatloaf, a corn casserole, cornbread, and apple bread pudding. Okay, I believe everybody out here has won something in the past. What have y'all won? One uh, with meatloaf one year, and one with the same corn casserole one year, and then last year we got third overall. And this year, you're hoping for? No, we're going to win this year. We're not hoping, we're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> it smells good. <laughs> <laughs> it smells great. Who are you? I'm Paul Hitt. Where are you from? I'm suffering from Suffer Springs. All right. Well, what, what is that we were just looking at? It's a, uh, what do you call it? Persomic chicken. And what's your name? My name is TJ. What's your name? My name is Zachary Pearson. Okay, y'all have all been out here before? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think everybody out here has won something in the past. What have y'all won? We won, we won uh, Best Meat in second place about four years ago. And we cooked in the Chuck Wagon uh, cook-off in May, and we won second place with chicken, chicken fried steak. So, he won third place last year doing the youth division. So we're here just, the, the winning part of it is, is people eating your food. Fun. That's it. <laughs> so y'all obviously enjoy this. Yes, sir. We sure do. And them pinto beans are the bad mamma jamma. <laughs> In the Dutch Oven Cook-Off, Donnie and Katie Martin won Best in Pot. First place winners in the meat category, Diane Flagtrot and Sharon Richmond. Brittany and Chris Wilson were first in vegetable. Richard Watkins won first in bread, and Melinda and Paul Hitt were first in dessert. In the youth division, Hunter Warren placed first, Michael Wood second, and Petey Price third. Dropping in the KSSD studios this morning from our hospital, longtime officer and employee there, Sherry Moore, and our brand new OBGYN doctor, Tiffany Gable. We have a new doctor, Tiffany Gable, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Good morning and thank you for coming. Good morning, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. I want to know when you got to Sulphur Springs and what route you took to get here. <laughs> what route? Oh, goodness, <laughs> that, the hardest question first because I'm directionally challenged, excuse me. <clears throat> <laughs> um, I arrived here the week before school started, so the week of August 16th. Um, we moved in just before school started to make sure the kiddos got situated. Started work here September 1st. Um, I came up 30 and then exited Hillcrest, came across the hospital airport drive because I'm near the 
the hospital where I live. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which Wonderful. is perfect, yeah. Close to work. Ideal for me. Mm-hmm. So you are not a Texas gal. Not by birth, but spent most of my life here. So I'm sure there's a bumper sticker that says that that makes it okay that I spent most of my life here. I can be Texan by, by claim. You sound Texan enough. Awesome. I'll take Although, that. Although you come from California. I right? do. Yes. I guess I'd like to know, you know, how you be- wanted to get to be a doctor and the field that you went into. Sure. Well, actually, I grew up wanting to be a dentist, interestingly enough. I knew I wanted to do stuff with my hands and help people. As I kind of got further into to college in my first couple years, I thought, you know, I kind of want to work on the whole body. And then um, as it came to picking specialties and things like that, um, taking care of a woman, which in turn takes care of the whole family, was huge to me. Um, so that became a calling. Plus, I got to watch my baby brother be born when I was 14 years old. And I think that that probably had some sort of indelible print upon me, that that was okay. a pretty pretty magical moment to share with, with anybody. Okay, so newly on staff at our hospital, an OBGYN, Tiffany Gable. Yes, ma'am. And tell us about your training along the way. Training. So I went to Texas A&M University, whoop, <laughs> um, and that's actually when they were still doing bonfire, so I get to claim that. I was up there on stack. I was out there cutting down trees with my dormitory, which was Hobby Hall. Um, actually lived on campus all four years, which is huge and heroic, but it was just too much fun to leave, so I didn't. <laughs> um, after that, I went to medical school in San Antonio, and then I did um, part of my OBGYN training at Parkland St. Paul, which is, they're now merged, a small private hospital with, with UT Southwestern in Parkland, and then I did my final year of training in the Carolinas. Okay. So all across the country. Okay. And tell us about your experience before coming here. Before coming here, I was in Corsicana for six years, another small town. Super fun. We just enjoy being able to get to our kiddos' activities and be involved and not sit in traffic and smiling faces. And we just wouldn't trade that for the world. So when we look for a, a new job, um, that's what we were looking for is another small town. I just love hearing that, Sherry, mm-hmm. not only from for just young couples who are finding the value of the small mm-hmm. town that maybe once they wanted to get away from, but professional people like Tiffany mm-hmm. coming to help out in our small towns. It's it's very unique. You know, one of my favorite holidays now is Halloween when I, when I get the kiddos shuffling by and I see whole groups of kids that I've delivered and they look up and they smile. That's, that's pretty special. And I don't think that I would get that in Dallas or Plano or anywhere else. There's just too many faces to recognize the, the few that you impact it, but here, they're everywhere you look. Mm-hmm. So true. Mm-hmm. And tell me where your office is. I, I'm officing uh, as of next week with Dowdy and Filder, so I'll be in the same office right across the street from the hospital, or right across the way, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the last week that I'm in the primary care clinic. Just some, you know, slowdowns with credentialing required me to be in a different office at first, but as of next week, I'll be there with them. Okay. So a full array of women's services. Yes, ma'am. All OB and all GYN. We take all comers. We're happy to care for anybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Sherry, now tell me, where will her office be? She will be at 113 Airport Road in Suite 200. Phone number is 903-439-4917. And it is, as soon as you go up on the elevator and open second floor opens it opens to the ob clinic okay. so it's where um, dr dowdy and dr fielder see patients all the time so she'll have her own hall and so um she'll be taking care of patients there i think she's helped with some deliveries already yeah probably caught so, a couple babies already yeah, yes ma'am so but and what she's not telling you and it's obviously i will tell you because i know the story <laughs> um she actually came to sulfur springs before she went to corsicana and looked at our our town and it just wasn't the right time obviously and so she um she came looking for us this time around and so we I lost sure an ob in um, july she moved to louisiana and had an opportunity to practice with an old schoolmate and just felt like that was what she wanted to do so we were left without a female ob and going oh goodness lord we need a female ob in sulfur springs and so she things were closing for her at Corsicana and it was an opportunity and so she came to us and she bought her house um, over the phone 
without I did. even seeing I only seeing the pictures. That's right. So <laughs> she actually bought the old Mitchell place where uh, Chris and Dr. Chris and Terry Mitchell live on Pipeline. Okay. So it's right by the hospital. So she uh, she's wanted to come here for a while. So I think it's kind of exciting to have her. Well, we're going to welcome, and I'm so sorry we're short on time. Welcome Tiffany Gable and her family to Sulphur Springs, and you can now be Sulphur Springs Wildcats. Awesome, yes. we love it. Yeah, as my son Alex Cooper said that he's a Wildcat already, and I thought, oh, you already know. That's great. I love it. <laughs> he is. So. And thank you for coming in today. Thank and you. you. Thank you, again. Thanks for having us. And we will be seeing you out and around our hospital. You will be seeing us. Here's Don Julian with sports. Lady Cats volleyball coach Justin Manis said that his team did what they needed to do as the Lady Cats rolled over Marshall 3 to nothing Friday in Wildcats gym. Coach Manis said Lady Cats servers made only three errors in the three sets. He singled out Amani Taylor for her serving. At one point in the third set, Taylor had 13 straight serves for points. Kaylee Jefferson led the Lady Cats with 10 kills. Tori Moore had a team leading 24 assists along with 11 digs. And in Hammock led the Lady Cats with 14 digs. Jefferson had a block solo and Jefferson and Autumn Tanton had one block assist each. The Lady Cats ended the first half of district play with a 5-1 and one record and they're 26-8 and eight for the season. They have a first place showdown with Hallsville in Wildcats Gym Tuesday night at 6.30. Hallsville is the only team to defeat the Lady Cats in district play this season. The Lady Bobcats won at home back on September the 9th. Both the Wildcats and Lady Cats cross-country teams had good results at a meet Saturday in Mount Pleasant. And we get more information from cross-country coach Ross Hicks. But district preview meet. Um, it was a overall. A, it was a good day for us. Um, on the boys' side, we we won the meet. We got first in the 5A, 6A division. So that was great. And on the girls' side, we got second. So mm -hmm. it was a it was a really good day overall. Um, the boys. Um, I think every one of them had a, a lifetime best um, wow. had a lifetime best race. We're a young team, like I've been saying, um, so we really have a lot of room to improve and to grow. And this was the the district course, so it's good to see those times really get getting better and building that confidence as we get closer to the district race. All right, uh, tell us how the guys did and the girls did. Um, so um, on the guys' side, we were again uh, led by Peyton Vickery, and then just right on his heels, just like usual, was uh, Landon Thornton. So mm -hmm. those two guys finished third and fourth in the race. Oh, wow. um, so they, they did well. And then um, kind of right behind them, about about 20 seconds, or less than 20 seconds behind them, was two other guys um, um, they, that they kind of battle. Um, mm -hmm. Andrew Escobar got the best of Eli Sellers this week. They mm -hmm. kind of battle, and they kind of have their own little battle, which is great. I love it. And they, were, they also finished in the top right around 9 and 10. Okay. And then all three of our other guys finished inside the top 15, with, wow. um, led by Ed Ramirez and then Alex Estrada and Na Nabian Ramirez all finished in the top 15, and they all got medals, which they loved. Yeah. So, um, How about on the girls' side? On the girls' side, uh, we were again led by Lauren Helm again. Again, a lot of personal best. Nearly everybody had a personal best. Mm -hmm. Everybody had the best time of the year the, um, this 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 race. Um, but yeah, we were led by Lauren Helm. She finished um, fourth overall, and um, she had a she had a really good race. And um, then actually next we had a a, a, a freshman, um, mm -hmm. Sydney Washburn, who really stepped up and just mm -hmm. really ran a great race. And then uh, we worked well together. That's kind of a theme this week of, uh, on the boys' side and the girls' side. The um, just right on her heels. We had two two other um, girls. We had um, Gracie. Um, we had uh, Gracie Boyer and mm -hmm. Hannah Dixon were just right on right on their heels, so that was great that they all came in right in right around in the top ten um, positions, um, and then um, followed uh, for our fifth runner was uh, Taylor Robinson, mm -hmm. so she kind of that that helped us to get that fifth runner um, a lot closer, so that we were able to to score well and finish second in the meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This Thursday, I believe, you'll go to Lindale for one more run before district. Right? Yes, yeah, we have a quick turnaround, so we'll be in Lindale on Thursday. Again, we'll see a lot of the district co competitors. This race is a little bit more, a little bit more hilly than this last one, but it's just, 
little inclines, so <laughs> nothing, nothing too bad. But it'll be great to see some, some, some uh, district competitors again in kind of the last race before district. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening. After I had, had my flag made and it was accepted on June the 14th, 1777, was the first day, first time that the government ever made a law about flags. And they said it will have 13 stripes alternating red and white. It will have a field of blue with 13 stars on it. They did not say which stripe was first. They didn't, they didn't say how the stars were organized. But that was the first flag. And it just happened that the day after the flag was passed, I married my second husband. Oh. <laughs> now, my second husband was not a pirate. He was a privateer. You see, the United States government did not have a navy. They took the merchant ships, and those merchant ships would attack the British and take the British soldiers off and steal the goods. Well, the British felt a little loose. They didn't particularly care for this. So my husband was captured, and he was taken to prison in England. During the time he was in prison in England, our first daughter died, and our second daughter was born. He died in prison. He never knew. Well, while he was in prison, uh, John Claypool, which happened to be someone that I went to school with at the, at the Quaker school, he was a free Quaker. Now, a free Quaker is a Quaker that believes that there are some fights worth fighting. So he actually fought for the Americans. And so he, he fought.